the best way to help conspiracy theorists is to treat them like they're addicts because they are. And I'm going to tell you why. So my mom is addicted to conspiracy theories uh, and I'm visiting her right now and it's all just like very, very like at the front of my mind. So this is something that I'm thinking about a lot. So basically, you know, a few months ago, we tried to make some progress on this by, um, you know, going to like family therapy and stuff and just trying to get to some sort of middle ground. And I found this therapy group that has counselors that specialize in something called conspiracy theory addiction. It's this clinic out in Oklahoma. Um, and as soon as I started reading about it, it made a lot of sense to view conspiracy theorists in this way. And one of the more interesting things about human nature is our ability to become addicted to practically anything. And just like my man pointed out, people definitely become addicted to conspiracy theories and just conspiratorial thinking in general, because like you said, it kind of, you know, makes them feel like they know something that other people don't know. But also you have to, you know, kind of put in work in order to maintain your beliefs of whatever. You have to see proof of whatever you believe. Otherwise, you're naturally going to start to question it. And we feel uncomfortable when our you know, foundation of belief seems to not be quite right. And so, you know, living in a time where we have access to limitless information and the search algorithms work the way that they do, you know, as people try to reinforce and, you know, reassure what they believe, they can just endlessly look up this crap video on YouTube and that crap video on whatever 4chan or whatever chan, you know, platform they have. And then they can, you know, watch all types of conspiratorial documentaries. There's an endless source of this type of information for them to get their hands on. The high that conspiracy theorists are chasing is the high of being in the know, of knowing something that everyone else doesn't, of not being one of the sheeple and of finding others that have also similarly been uh, woken up to the reality of the world as they see it. So that's the high and they need treatment for it. But truth be told, unless you happen to live with somebody who's caught up in a bunch of conspiracies or, you know, maybe you're dating someone who is, which, you know, maybe you should uh, cut that off if it's too extreme. But unless you like happen to be living in close quarters with somebody like this, honestly, the best way to deal with conspiratorial thinkers is to not deal with them at all. To put more of your energy on people who are sound minded, who, you know, are in the game for the same types of policy outcomes, who, you know, want a better education system, want a better healthcare system, people who want a better, more balanced economic and tax system, and people who are passionate about seeing change happen in their communities. Don't even waste your time trying to change the minds of people who are too far gone because you can get addicted to that as well. You know, endlessly arguing with people back and forth on platforms like Twitter and Facebook to no avail because like I just pointed out, no matter what you say, no matter how much information you give to them, they can just turn right back around and find all the information in the world to prove them right, even if they're wrong. What does ego have to do with conspiracy theories? Actually, it's what fuels every conspiracy theory. I'll explain. In my last video, I talked about three reasons why people believe conspiracy theories. One is when there's a lack of information, a conspiracy theory fills in that missing gap of knowledge. Two is when something causes anxiety, a conspiracy theory helps you predict where that threat is coming from, so it doesn't feel so random. Three is wanting to follow your in-group. So if your political party or whatever believes a conspiracy, then you are more likely to believe it. And the fourth reason is ego. People who believe conspiracy theories believe they are in a special group of independent thinkers who know the truth. They think they have a superior knowledge while the majority of people are just sheep who are foolishly gullible and easily manipulated. With the 2022 midterms and the 2024 presidential elections coming up, we have to continue to send a message not only to the Republicans, but also to the Democrats that we're not just going to sit back and accept them doing nothing. You know, as they took their vacation until a couple of days ago when we have all these mass shootings going on and the public attention is back on the issue, when Republicans are openly robbing women of their rights to abortion and robbing all of the rest of us to our rights to vote in any type of way that makes sense, you know, people aren't just going to sit back and take that. And especially on the left, we're not just going to accept the Democrats' fecklessness and accept them not delivering in areas where they said they could. Now, you know, if Biden cancels $10,000 worth of student debt for people who made $150,000 or less, great, that's what he ran on. But we're not going to sit back and accept that like that's enough. We're not going to let that just be the can that they kick down the road. We're going to get people elected who we know are going to deliver. And we're going to keep doing that with every election 
you know, whether it's the federal, state, or local level. That's what we got to do.